morning and thank you for joining us. All right, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Sure, when you now your first weather. And we saw some mild temperatures once again across much of West Tennessee here late this afternoon. Highs in the low to mid 60s in most areas, but we've been noticing those winds being pretty gusty from the northwest. And with those winds gusting out of the northwest up to 22 miles per hour as of last hour, that's going to drag, drag in a few cooler air. Actually, temperatures get back into the 30s overnight. It looks like a cold day for your Wednesday. We'll talk more about that with your hometown forecast coming up. But first, your local news starts now. 39 News Night Edition is brought to you by Physicians Quality Care, where we treat you like family. Two locations, open seven days a week. Now, from your hometown news team, in the heart of downtown Jackson, this is 39 News Night Edition. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Meredith Mitchell. And I'm Josh Shagbert. A new hotel and convention center could be coming to the city of Jackson in the near future. But some city council leaders and hotel industry members have concerns. 39 News' Jackson Overstreet has more from today's city council meeting. Could these parking lots outside the Jackson General's ballpark be the site of a brand new conference center and hotel? That's what one proposal to the Jackson City Council is suggesting. The owners of the ball team have made a proposal to build a conference center and a hotel in exchange for them not, not having to pay some of the sales tax and hotel motel tax. The proposed conference center and hotel would be 18,000 square feet and cost roughly $30 million to build. The city would owe the group that built the site, the occupancy and sales tax generated by it, an estimated $300,000 a year. Councilman Randy Wallace believes that the convention center would bring in enough groups to help offset the lack of collected taxes. Uh, it's no different than any other uh, public building the city has, our civic center, uh, Coliseum. They don't make money for the city, but they help bring business into the city, sales tax dollars and those types of things. Other members of the city council have concerns about the plan that's proposed, including its complicated nature. The contract is roughly 90 pages long. I am a person that does not want to get us into a deal that we do not fully understand and that may not eventually be profitable. Jackson City Council members were not the only ones to raise concerns about the proposed plan. Hotel industry leaders from the area also spoke at today's meeting. Yeah, we spent a lot of money um, back into the city and this is supposed to go towards public funds to help better our area and what it appeared to be was it was more about private enterprise. At the end of the discussion, the council voted to form a committee to look over the plan for future consideration. In downtown Jackson, 439 News, I'm Jackson Overstreet.
The council also voted today to accept a gift of five and a half acres of land near the Jackson Tennis Center. A Jackson police officer has been arrested in Gibson County. Jacob Adam Hill was arrested on a charge of child abuse, neglect or endangerment of a child under eight years old after spanking his four year old son on Christmas Eve. Hill is currently on paid administrative leave. He will appear next in court on February 20th at 1 p.m. <clears throat> Jackson State Community College will see over a thousand students from West Tennessee in just two days. Students who are hoping to gain experience for their future careers. 39 News' Camila Reda has more. Over a thousand high school students have been studying and preparing all year long for the 2019 Future Health Professionals Competition, also known as HOSA. I'm really nervous when I walk in there, but then when I leave, I'm more confident in myself because I know what I'm doing. I studied really hard for it. The competition started today and took place at Jackson State Community College. Students spent the day in over 30 health science competitions. We have um, research persuasive speaking, which is where they go back and, of course, do the research and then um, write a speech about it and then they present it. Um, and then we have other competitions where it's more hands on. Tomorrow is the last day of regionals and the top five from each category will go compete in state. But that's not all they're hoping to gain. Students not only compete to go to state or internationals, they hope to take this experience that they've gained and pursue a job in the health and sciences field. We have really focused on HOSA not being just a competitive um, organization. We want our students to learn leadership and learn networking skills and um, just any skill that will help them succeed in post-secondary and then in their future career. The HOSA state competition will be in Chattanooga in March and the international competition will take place in Orlando. For 39 News, I'm Camila Rueda. January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, and the Jackson-Madison County Health Department is doing what they can to create awareness. They encourage parents to take their kids in for the series of HPV vaccinations around the age of 11 and 12. And although there may not be any signs, they encourage both men and women to start getting exams and testing at age 21. They say HPV is a small virus that can lead to large consequences. Um, we recommend yearly physical exams for women starting at 21. I mean, at those exams, we offer a pap smear, which checks for cervical cancer. Um, we encourage yearly breast exams, which we perform at those exams. Um, we offer STI testing. The health department says it's important for everyone to get the vaccine because it's the only cancer preventing vaccine. Everyone up to age 26 can still take the HPV vaccine. What's well, that time of year when there is a rise of doctor visits in your schedule? With more of what viruses to look out for, here's Dr. Ryan Stanton with this week's What's Going Around. I'm Dr. Ryan Stanton and it's time to find out what's going around. Hands down, the predominant feature of this time of year is the emergency department visits associated with viral syndromes. Whether it's the common cold or the worst the flu has to offer around this time of year is when the numbers spike. There are a couple that cause more significant symptoms and presentations. First is RSV or respiratory syncytial virus. This virus and close relatives cause bronchiolitis, which is inflammation and secretions with cough and respiratory distress especially and worst among young children. This is a common cause for hospital admission in very young children. Management is supportive and symptomatic and there is no cure unfortunately other than time and no vaccine for prevention. Most kids will have this at some point when they are young. The other is the flu, resulting in an estimated 50,000 deaths from the virus and its associated complications last year. The strain we are seeing now is the H1N1, which was called swine flu back in 2009 and 10. The curve is looking much like the 2014 season thus far, and a combination of the vaccine exposure and strain over the last nine years will hopefully temper the disease a bit. This is still a dangerous virus with its often accompanying co-infections, especially among the elderly and young children. Of note, last year 80% of the pediatric deaths were in children that did not get the vaccine, though the majority of children actually were vaccinated, meaning the vaccine significantly decreased the risks of complications and death by about six times. The key for viral season is prevention as much as possible, symptom management, and seeking care with more concerning or severe symptoms.
You can join the conversation on our What's Going Around Facebook page or at Everyday Med on Twitter. I'm Dr. Ryan Stanton, and that's What's Going Around. A bankruptcy court is giving Sears an extra day to negotiate a deal to save the company. Sears chairman Eddie Lambert now has another chance to buy the retailer out of bankruptcy. The move would save more than 50,000 jobs and prevent some 400 stores from closing. Lambert has until 4 p.m. tomorrow to pay $120 million deposit. Sears filed for bankruptcy protection back in October. Amazon is now the most valuable publicly traded company in the United States. This as a volatile stock market continues to reshuffle the corporate pecking order. The giant online retailer ellipsed Microsoft on Monday to take the top spot after Amazon shares rallied and increased its market value to nearly $800 billion, while Microsoft's value is currently valued at $784 billion. This marks the first time Amazon has reached the top status, ending Microsoft's brief return to the top after surpassing Apple in late November. Donated blood in the U.S. is required to be screened for the Zika virus, but new research suggests that is not the best use of money. Zika is almost always spread by mosquitoes. It's known to cause severe birth defects in unborn children if a pregnant woman becomes infected. An outbreak in 2015 led to universal screening of the blood supply in the U.S. However, there's been no confirmed transmission of Zika through blood transfusion. A new study from the Red Cross and Stanford University found screening policies have not been cost effective in the 50 states. The only benefit was screening during mosquito season in Puerto Rico. The Zika outbreak is largely over. Spending on medical marketing has gone up here in the U.S. That's according to a new study from Dartmouth College. Spending on drugs, health campaigns, health services, and lab testing increased over $12 billion from 1997 to 2016. The majority of that was done on pharmaceutical marketing to healthcare professionals. Researchers say regulatory oversight remains limited despite the increase. Well, cancer is the second biggest cause of death for Americans behind heart disease. But cancer mortality rates have been falling and have now hit a major milestone, the lowest cancer death rate in 25 years. Erica Edwards reports. Fewer Americans are dying of cancer, in part because more people are sticking to New Year's resolutions. They may not be drinking as much alcohol, they may have lost some weight, they may exercise more. The American Cancer Society reports a steady decline in cancer mortality over the past quarter century, resulting in a 27 percent drop in the overall cancer death rate. Credit also goes to drops in cigarette smoking, as well as advances in early detection and treatment of the most common cancers, like those of the breast, colon, lung, and prostate. But economically, poor areas still have much higher rates of cancer mortality. If you don't have the economic resources, if you don't have the access to, to get the latest treatments, that's where the problem is. And death rates rose for cancers of the liver, pancreas, and uterus, all obesity-related diseases, leaving cancer experts resolving to continue work towards saving more lives. The American Cancer Society estimates 600,000 people will die of cancer in the U.S. this year alone. Well, still ahead on 39 News 9 edition, we have a recap of Clemson bringing home the national title against Bama in last night's game. And a new gun control legislation is at the top of the Democrats' agenda as new Congress members settle in. And we had some mild temperatures once again today. 67, the high temperature across West Tennessee. Of course, that was very early in the day. Now we're seeing temperatures back into the 40s, eventually waking up the 30 degree temperatures by early tomorrow morning. Winter is back. It looks like we'll keep some winter in the forecast here the next several days. So we'll talk about that when we come back.
Now, NBC 39 weather. And welcome back everyone. We did see temperatures warm once again the earlier today. We're in the 60s in most areas here before those cooler temperatures started to kind of make their way into our area. That's all along northwest winds that were gusty this afternoon as high as 25 to 35 miles per hour in much of West Tennessee. Now with clearing skies overnight tonight, the winds do calm back to about 10 miles per hour from the northwest. Overnight lows though dipping into 33 degrees, so clear and much colder as we start our Wednesday. And then it looks like temperatures really don't get re get much better throughout the day. Now we'll get back in the 40s. That is about typical for this time of year as our high temperatures should make it back to the mid to upper 40s as we head into our Wednesday afternoon. Should be a lot of sunshine around. Winds really not too bad. May still see winds about 10 miles per hour, which would make it feel a little bit chillier across the area for your Wednesday. Still looking like the chilly temperatures really get here on Thursday. And then our next weather system we got to keep an eye on for the weekend could bring some chilly rain to the area across much of the area as we get to Saturday and into early on Sunday. Here's what your weather notes look like for the next couple days. Again, mostly sunny skies, cooler as we head into your Wednesday, even chillier for Thursday. Highs reaching only about 40 or maybe low 40s for many areas by Thursday afternoon. And then next system gets organized down to our south and west. That should bring a few clouds back to the area. So we we'll increase our cloudiness as we get to Friday as temperatures still stay on the chilly side. Low to mid 40s expected as we end the work week. Current wind gusts across the area. Then, yeah, we're still seeing these northwest winds as high as 10 to 15, even 22 mile per hour wind gust as of last hour in Jackson. But the winds are starting to die down a little bit. We're seeing most winds getting down to 5 to 10 mile per hour wind gusts. And here in Jackson, the next hour or two, we'll probably see those winds die down as well. But also with the dying down of the winds, temperatures starting to cool off as well. After seeing highs in the 60s today, and most areas made it to the mid to low 60s, even some upper 60s, we're found just down to our south, 68. The high in Memphis today, 64. The high in, in Milan, 64 in Dyersburg, 64 in Covington, and 67 degrees here in Jackson. Many of these temperatures reached their high shortly after noon, and then really during the afternoon hours, our temperatures are kind of falling, and they'll continue to fall overnight tonight. And it looks like our temperature trend the next several days, trending more, feeling more like January than really feeling like March, like we've been enjoying as we had temperatures well above average over the last several days. But our normal high this time of year is 48. So again, we're going to be very close to that on Wednesday with mostly sunny skies. Actually getting below that Thursday and Friday with temperatures basically staying low to mid 40s in most areas. There's that next chance of rain arriving on Saturday. Right now looking like mainly just a cold rain in most areas, but areas just to the north and west and extreme northwest parts of Tennessee. I see a few flurries in the area as temperatures will be a little bit colder north and west of Jackson where they may actually mix up a little precipitation. But again, we're going to be seeing mainly rain in our area, even as overnight lows drop down near freezing. I think we'll stay above freezing, so all of our precipitation should be rain here in Jackson. Now our precipitation chances over the next five to seven days. Again, we're not seeing much of a chance the next couple of days, seeing a little increase on Friday and really noticing that chance going up as we head to Saturday. That's when the best chance of precipitation will move into the area. Here's what it looks like as we get into your Wednesday high pressure over in Oklahoma, actually bringing those colder temperatures right back into West Tennessee and really much of the mid south. Seeing much chillier temperatures around. Should see a lot of sunshine, but temperatures getting back to being more seasonable for this time of year. Then we watch our next system. That's going to be a system to watch. As you can see here from our forecast map here in Jackson, we're going to stay out of the winter precipitation, but don't have to go very far to the north and to the west to run into some pretty heavy snow. St. Louis down to parts of southern Missouri. We'll see some pretty heavy snow with this system. Again, any track of the difference in the system may actually bring a little bit of that light snow to our area, but right now looking like we're going to stay mainly with a chilly rain as that system moves through on Saturday. 47 for the high on your Wednesday, partly to mostly sunny skies. Winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Seven day forecast keeps the 40s around Thursday and Friday, low to mid 40s. There's that chance of rain on Saturday. Could keep it dry and a little bit sunny into early next week. That's when temperatures do eventually get back to the upper 40s by around Tuesday. All right, stay with us. More news when we come back.
The Democrats legislative agenda in the new Congress is starting to take shape and on high on the list is new gun control legislation. Today House Democrats announced a bill that would broaden background checks for gun purchases and transfers. Leanne Caldwell reports from Capitol Hill. Democrats are making a statement in the early days of this Congress by prioritizing expansive gun safety legislation. The bill would greatly expand criminal background checks to cover every gun purchase or transfer, even those sold online, at gun shows, or even between friends and family. With a spate of mass shootings, including in Las Vegas, Parkland, Texas, and Orlando, gun control advocates say this universal background check bill is historic. We say enough is enough uh, by finally bringing common sense bipartisan background check legislation to the floor of the House. Is that not exciting? It's been a priority for advocates since the Sandy Hook massacre in 2012, and it's being unveiled on the eighth anniversary that former Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords was shot in the head. Now is the time to come together, be responsible. Democrats, Republicans, everyone. We must never stop fighting. Fight, fight, fight. Public polling shows that 92% of people support background checks. The gun lobby, however, is still fiercely opposed. And while it is likely to sail through the House of Representatives, it is likely to get stuck in the Republican-led Senate. Well, coming up, we have more on Matt LaFleur's move to the Green Bay Packers. And hear from Grizzlies coach J.B. Bickerstaff as his team's struggles continued last night. But she wanted to go. Uh, some are seeing it as a. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nicole Menner. Some are seeing it as a surprise that Titans offensive coordinator Matt LaFleur was plucked from his assistant coaching ro role with the Titans to take over head coaching duties with the Green Bay Packers. The Titans missed out on the playoffs and struggled offensively for the better half of 2018, but he may be just exactly what Green Bay needs. The 39-year-old has just one full season of calling NFL plays under his belt. But he's had success in the past working with quarterbacks Jared Goff back in 2017 and Matt Ryan during his 2016 MVP season. Now as for the Titans offense, there was a lot that played into their struggles this season. LaFleur's squad was plagued by injuries throughout the year, from Marcus Mariota to tight ends Delaney Walker and Jonu Smith. In working with who he did have, LaFleur was able to help Corey Davis double his rookie stats this season and bring out the best in running back Derrick Henry, especially towards the end of it. So for those questioning the move of LaFleur as a head coach, don't count him out just yet. In some other head coaching news, the Cardinals are finalizing a deal to hire former Texas Tech coach Cliff Kingsbury to be their next head coach. Kingsbury was named USC's offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach in early December, just days after being fired as head coach of Texas Tech. Despite not having any NFL coaching experience, Kingsbury has been viewed as a hot commodity because of the hand he's played in developing high-level quarterbacks 
such as the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, and the Cleveland Browns, Baker Mayfield. And for the second time in three years, Dabo Swinney and the Clemson Tigers rolled over Nick Saban's Crimson Tide in the college football title game. This one was a lopsided affair with Clemson beating Alabama 44-16. No one saw that coming. To finish the season a perfect 15-0, the first team in the modern era to accomplish that feat. Freshman quarterback Trevor Lawrence was named the offensive MVP of the game after throwing for nearly 350 yards and three touchdowns. And Dabo fully expects to see Bama again next year. Little brother's kind of grown up a little bit, and now you know we're a little more competitive. Um, and now we're we kind of won the rubber match, if you will, in uh, in the Natties. Uh, it's two two overall. And I told Coach Saban last night he was very gracious after the game, and, and I just told him I said, "See you next year," because uh, I don't think they're going to go anywhere. They'll be back. Well, the Memphis Grizzlies have had a tumultuous few weeks, and their play on the court hasn't exactly made up for the off-court drama. Memphis was in New Orleans last night to take on an also struggling Pelicans team, but yet another third quarter slump would result in a 114-95 loss, marking the Grizzlies' sixth straight. But Coach Bickerstaff still remains optimistic that his guys can turn this thing around. This is a good group to come to work with. Um, they practice hard. They're working with one another. Um, the effort is always good. So they're, they're a fun group to come to work with. They make, you know, this rut or these moments easier to deal with um, because they do care about what we're doing. And they're, you know, doing everything in their power uh, to try to resolve, you know, where we are right now. The Grizzlies play the Spurs tomorrow night. Hopefully they can turn it around. It's beginning to look like last season. I know, and you just feel so bad because there's so much hope and there's at the so beginning much of the season. And there's so much going on behind the scenes with the locker room fights to Chandler Parsons now, and it's just it's a little messy over there in Memphis, <laughs> but there's time to turn it around. We'll see. See what happens. Nicole, thanks. We're back right after this. Taking a final look at our seven-day forecast. Make sure you got that winter jacket out tomorrow as temperatures start in the 30s. A little bit of a wind. Have a little bit of a wind chill to deal with as well. 47 the high on Wednesday afternoon. About where we should be this time of year. Even colder though Thursday and Friday. Highs in the low 40s. Our next chance of precipitation comes in on Saturday. Mainly rain across much of the area. But it'll be a chilly rain with temperatures staying in the 40s. And we'll actually stay in the low to mid 40s into the early parts of next week. At least it's consistent for the next week. There you go. No, January not. weather, basically. I wish we could <laughs> bottle up today. <laughs> well, thanks for watching 39 News. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a great night. Follow us online, like us on Facebook, and visit our website, wnbjtv.com.